Hello, in this video, I want to continue some of the conversations that we've been having about Moton and the worker strike. In the last couple of videos, in the last like four videos, I kind of talked about like what the criticism for Moton and Harney would look like on the worker strike resolution as a negative strategy versus policy teams and how I thought policy teams could better answer this argument if they do end up seeing it as a negative strategy against them and i could definitely want to continue some of the conversation there i think from from there into the, some of the stuff that we'll be talking about here because i definitely think some of the stuff that we're talking about i.e things like policy and planning and some of the kind of like core arguments that are really problem that are really critiques of like the problematic nature of state recognition into workers rights and carry that worker strike and carry that on to the conversation that we'll be having in this video if you haven't i would definitely go back and watch the last couple of videos especially the intro to promoting in the worker strike because that's where i kind of sit and talk about what the bases are for the affirmative and negative conversations that we'll kind of be having like going forward and what that kind of like looks like uh, as we do the worker strike resolution and so I definitely think it's really important context to have as we kind of like figure out what type of like ways to best use this argument from like all angles in this particular video I want to talk about Moton and Harney as an affirmative strategy um, on the worker strike resolution because I definitely think that the work that Moton and Harney have done to talk about different ways of organizing resistance strategies is really important to the way in which we kind of like understand like what our relationship to the worker strike could be and like what it means to kind of like organize differentially and I think kind of like forwarding that and having it as a kind of like central criticism fire you're thinking about like what type of alternative ways to theorize the resolution and what types of methods can be possible under the resolution I th definitely think it's an interesting place to go and somewhere where I definitely think we can have like a conversation in terms of how it really matches up against um all of the different types of arguments that we'll that could show up whether it's like case arguments framework arguments uh k uh k arguments counterpoint arguments and disad arguments and so the first place that i kind of want to start is just kind of like what does the ideal version of this affirmative look like what pieces does it have that makes it a particularly good type of affirmative on this resolution and like how can you kind of like make it into exactly what you want it to be i definitely think that at a method level there are definitely a lot of different things that you can say about the worker strike i feel like there is an angle where you're talking about the worker strike from its relationship to prisoners and abolition that can involve Moton and Harney. I feel like there's an angle where you're able to talk about the resolution in relationship to why Marxism or the idea or the subject capacity of the worker is kind of like a bad place to theorize off of and read an argument kind of about how Moton is theorizing paraontology and fugitivity in um, relationship to the worker strike. And I also think that you could read other arguments that Moton and Harney are kind of talking about in terms of like what ways to socially organize in the face of like state co-option or state subsumption, which I definitely think lends itself to something more like... Um, militant preservation or other ways of really thinking about a different type of social organization for how resistance movements are geared and i definitely think all of these open up really interesting ways to kind of like bring problems to how the resolution is thinking about the category of the worker as a whole and i definitely think that one of the key places that Milton and harney's argument really strikes the core for this resolution is the argument about the way in which kind of like marxism both registers the like blackness and its relationship to objectivity but also the way in which bar black uh, marxism as a theory kind of requires this like legitimate uh, face of citizenship in re relationship to the sovereign it kind of requires this one-to-one -one relationship between one cons person consenting to the law and that making them kind of like accountable and able to change the kind of like nature of the law and I think that the core arguments that you can kind of make is that that is kind of like not how it works in relationship to those that exist outside of the kind of like category of worker and whose structural violence or relationship to structural violence is outside of like the paradigm that is like most often used for Marxists to really write about the worker and I think that that's like a really important place to kind of like start a lot of the where you want to make your core criticism because then I think regardless of whether you want to go with the method debate to kind of like tie it up with whatever kind of like structural exclusion is made under the resolution you have a lot of arguments to make about why the state's assumption of resistance under the banner of workers strike is what kind of like authorizes it to do hegemonic violence onto various other types of resistance movements and it allows you to really set up an argument about the kind of like uh, violent cycle that the state is able to enter into via its investment to kind of like deter resistance and to make like alternative forms of resistance outside the state impossible i think that when you kind of like take this into like how you should answer some of like the go-to case arguments i feel like most of the case arguments that teams will make from a policy arena are definitely mostly about uh like the state being like basically reparative and being able to be responsive to the demands that are made by radical groups and liberalism being like this self-repairing thing and secondary it being a question of just like how the state reacts to these kind of revolutionary movements that are outside of the workers strike i 
I definitely think that for a lot of like policy teams, they'll definitely run to crackdown arguments to try to like win that the way in which the state is already responding to movements is what necessitates being able to create the possibility of recognition. And I feel like a lot of the arguments that you want to make is that the field of what representation and recognition really upholds is so limited that it makes it like really hard in order to create discussions that uh, basically allow for um, discussions that really allow for what a, a process of creating tactics that are outside of the state, that crackdown isn't really the end-all be-all to how we are able to evaluate the success of failure of movements because of the way in which that linear trajectory towards history, the idea of a movement isn't still existing if it's been toppled by the government, that, that means that it was a failure, does not allow us to pay homage to the way in which those movements relate to the material redistribution and concerns that people face structurally every day, whether it be different programs by the Black Panther Party, whether it be mutual aid resources that were passed around by people like the move or a um, move more move movement uh in different organizations i think that it's really important to be able to have a lot of arguments that kind of center around the uh question of like whether or not we're able to evaluate the movements on the same vector as the way in which these policy teams and the policy kind of like quota or uh, arguments that they're reading really want them to be evaluated on and being able to push against that as a paradigm that kind of like reinstills a lot of the same kind of like core structural problems of governmentality that like moton and Hardy are really problematizing early on i then think that when it transitions to a question of the framework and t debate it's really a question of how you can make uh, the arguments with framework and T feel like you're able to make an interpretation of the debate that is able to basically win that the relationship th between like how we're able to create recognition cannot be through a human rights based framework and I often think that um, with this type of like resolution for a lot of kid teams at the, like the framework T level I think it's a lot smarter for you to go farther to the left and try to win that like if you're right about the interpretation of our relationship governance being one in which the government is only trying to consume what radical protest and looks like then we have to have a radical refusal of the terms in which like policy is done on and really a revamping of what debate looks like overall i think pairing this with a lot of arguments about how the university is kind of part of the neoliberal process that can kind of ensures the state's ability to ontologize itself as ever present and is able to kind of create this ability for it to monopolize and financialize itself based off of its ability to trace movements through various forms of neoliberal study and neoliberal desires then you have a lot of arguments to make at a uniqueness level about why that kind of could of the topic is a stable locus that we need to use in order to create and reinsure uh, governmentality as a self-correcting system is wrong and harmful. And I think locating a lot of your offense there can be super, super helpful for how you're able to build stuff going into the future. Hopefully this video was helpful and hopefully you'll tune into more videos. And yeah, thanks.